are live officially. Score. Sweet. Uh, welcome everyone um, to this signature tire live. Uh, my name is Ethan. I am with um, Reddington and Rio, and I'm the community manager. Um, and today we're featuring Britta, one of our own at Rio. And Britta, what do you do here? So I am one of the product developers uh, working primarily with flies. And myself and Patrick Kilby designed uh, the up until recently, the majority of the Rio branded flies. And now we have signature tires as well. So it's not up to only us, but we've definitely, yeah, we've designed a lot of the patterns that we have for sale that are labeled as Rios in front of them in the title. Awesome. And you are headed to Christmas Island soon, and that's what spurred us to yeah. do this. Um, yes. So we're going to tie some flies that'll work on Christmas Island. Yeah. So one of my first flies that I'm going to tie is basically one that I designed uh, originally the first time I went to Christmas Island in advance of that. And it's just a really simple uh, universal bait fish pattern. It ended up catching the majority of the bluefin trevally the last time that we went. And so I came back and designed a bunch of different colors of it. And that's what we're going to tie. It's called the Rio's Booze Cruise. So we're basically tying this guy on a one-aught Gamakatsu SL12S, which is just a nice sturdy hook for saltwater. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap just from the barb essentially to the point, And that's it. Because we're going to make this foul free. And you'll see what I'm talking about as I go along here. So I'm going to use this pattern. Usually it's going to use either slinky fiber or something similar. You could use the sculpting flash fiber. You can use EP fiber if you want. It will all work. And because it's tied in a foul free fashion, it doesn't necessarily need to be a really heavy, like stiff um, fiber that's going to keep it from wrapping. Um, so what you're going to do is basically take a clump of this slinky or whatever you're using it or for it, and you're going to stack it in hand. So you basically By the way, have everyone, I'm using a different color if you're wondering why you are, yeah. doing, she's doing gray. So, so we're basically going to stack it so that you have even amounts on either side here. And I'm going to tie it in right where I stop my thread. So tie it in like so. This is going to be our tail here, basically. And are there colors that like worked really well for you while you were there? Or that yeah, I'm a big fan along? of light colors, neutral colors, and whites. Okay. White works really good because if you bring like Copic markers or something like that, you could have coloring time later on and just go to town on what you think the fish would like. So now I'm going to take that front part and I'm going to fold it back over itself and do just a couple wraps to hold that down. By hand stacking it and then tying it down in the middle and then folding it back, that ensures that it's not gonna pull out at all. So it's kind of locked in there. Next, we're gonna uh, take a I did just break my thread, so Patrick gave me, uh, I'm gonna blame it on him for giving me a bad bobbin. <laughs> it happens. Um, so Patrick we're gonna is the other fly designer for y'all, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we'd like to request that people put in recommendations and requests to actually have him tie as well. Uh, he is a fantastic tire and he's great at his descriptions, but he absolutely hates being on camera at all. So we think that he should do it more often. Um, all right. Please comment below. <laughs> Please. Um, so next we're going to take a clump and do the same thing of the same color. So the darker of the two colors, if you've got it, or white, if you're doing all white, really doesn't matter. Black works too. Um, and you're going to just tie that in right on top and do the exact same thing, except before you fold it back, we're going to do something different. So it's tied on, on top there. And then I'm going to take a little clump of the white that I'm going to use. This is like an off-white kind of polar bear color. And hand stack it as well. I'm gonna rotate my vise. 
and do the same thing. I'm basically tying it in right on the bottom here. Hook point up. Once that's tied down, I'm gonna fold it back over. Flip my vise and fold over the other piece. Now I'm gonna wrap in front of those so it keeps them pushed back. And Britta, you've designed like obviously a ton of our saltwater patterns. Are there like universal things you think about when you're tying for saltwater specifically? Yeah, the hook is probably the most important. Um, you know, for things like triggerfish, it needs to be a really durable hook. Okay. Uh, we have done a very large quantity of testing. We have an Instron machine that's pretty awesome here, which is we're really fortunate to have. And so we could test tensile strength on different hooks. Hmm. Um, so we definitely make sure that we're only using the best hooks for what we're doing. Um, usually it's going to be like Gonikatsu SL12S, the short shank version of that. Uh, there's some of the AirX hooks that do a fantastic job as well and test really high. Um, and then some of the Tiemco hooks as well. So those are gonna, those are going to be the best ones. That you should just throw that bobbin away. I did it again, and I don't have but a hook. Right, you're pretty People much done with that fly anyways. Mine's, mine's great. Yeah, it looks great. So basically, now we're right here, and I'm gonna whip finish it. Like I said, this is a really tough fly. So I'm gonna whip finish this, and then I'll show you my favorite part on it. Is the next step. Well, few steps. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is why it's called a foul free fly. And the reason being is, is that obviously it's tied at, at the end of the shank. For a fly that's gonna be gulped down by a fish that's got like a bucket mouth or something that's gonna just take the whole fly in at once, there's no reason to tie it up to the front, which means that there's no reason to worry about having something that's a stiff material because you're not tying it over that hook point and risking that. So by doing it this way, we're going to put the eyes on right here. It's going to pretty much prevent it from fouling and wrapping around that hook. Um, it makes it a lot easier to throw because you're not throwing on a bunch of materials that are going to absorb more water. And it the fish don't care. Like they can't see that it's not tied to the front of the hook. What does this thing look like when it's wet underwater and how does it cast? So it casts pretty well, it sheds water. Yeah, yeah, it sheds water really well because of the materials, which is great. And um, I would say this casts about as easy as uh, any of your standard flies, bait fish flies that aren't tied with something. You know, some of the worst flies you could ever cast are gonna be things like dragon tails and such, which is like casting a wet towel. Um, and this is significantly easier than that. Uh, I was throwing this with an eight weight Maverick and I had zero issues at all casting this decently and far enough to where I needed to. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy. You could even get away with throwing this with a six weight if you wanted to, no problem. <laughs> so now that I use the UV stuff and I got that all perfect, I get to do my favorite part, which is cutting it. I just have to make sure because my I get really excited at this part and I tend to turn it into a chia pet and go crazy. Less is more. Always in fly tying. Less is yep. always more. Yeah. Um, so the goal with this is to get it that tapered shape like that, right? You want it a tapered bait fish shape. Here we go. Cut me off. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not touching it anymore. All right, so now that that looks like a bait fish, the last and most important step that makes me really happy, but the fish don't care at all, so I don't know why I even do it, is to bar it. Um, so I take some Copic marker. This is the warm gray number five. And I put some bars on this because it looks really awesome. Uh, this fly looks fantastic. I gotta cut this off, it's gonna be crazy. Um, this fly looks fantastic if you do it with a light olive on the top and cream on the bottom. It looks great all white. If you do purple on top, um, purple and black, or purple on the bottom, I mean black on top, 
you could get away with a lot of different stuff and this will fish for everything. You could even do it in a four odd if you wanted to and still do fine with it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was our number one uh, striper fly when we went out east, actually. I think we caught more fish yeah. on this in blue and white than anything else. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, this one, I'm a big fan of the office, so the booze cruise was the name of this one. Oh. Uh, for good reason. But we have them. I would say that the uh, mojito color is my personal favorite. That's like the olive and lavender kind of color combo. The uh, dark and stormy which is like a brownish or tan over white. That one's really good. There's just, all of them are great. Pina Colada is great because any color it if you want, it's all white. Um, but that is that guy right there. And if you don't tie, we obviously sell these at rioproducts.com or at your local fly shop, go in and ask. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna tie one more if we have time. Yeah, yeah. Just for fun. another color, cool. No, I'm going to tie actually some a little shrimp real quick. Oh, the shrimp. Okay, cool. Just, um, this won't take me that long. One of the things that I had never done much of prior to the last trip to Christmas Island was target consistently triggers. And so this was a pattern similar to one that I tied up beforehand. And it ended up where it was catching most of the fish when we went. And after the first day, I'd hooked up with three or four triggers and nobody else had caught any. So we got back and I sat there and took everybody's flies at camp and sat down at the vise and literally tied on a bunch of orange legs onto them for everybody else and then sent them back out for everybody in the morning. This one's actually on a saltwater jig hook, which is kind of fun. It's the Airx saltwater jig which is a really beefy hook actually for a saltwater jig. Um, it's as tough as the gamakatsu jig hooks are. So I'm gonna put a size small dumbbell gold lead eye on there and wrap to the back there. Britta, when did you start tying? I started tying and taught myself when I was 10. It wasn't pretty, but um, I, we had a, um, some steelhead fly tying books at my cabin when I was younger. And so that was kind of my, what I, tr that was all I tied. And that was pretty much what I thought was all you needed in the world was steelhead books. So, and tying. So like all my flies were like old school stuff, like teeny nymphs and stuff like that. Um, sky comish sunrise. That was another big one that I thought everybody used for everything. Damn you, legs. Sorry, there was a dam in there. Yeah, it's good. actually way better than normal. And those are rubber legs, like orange? Yeah, they're just rubber legs. There's an orange tip and then there's a um, grizzly bard. Okay. And these guys I'm gonna end up cutting shorter anyways. Now I'm gonna put some of the FNF slush jelly on there. That's like that orange eggy stuff you showed me earlier ish. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. it's actually really fun to work with. Uh, and it looks really good in the water because it's not like, unlike other chenille that's like really sparkly, this is not obnoxious. And I tend to like flies that don't have a bunch of flash and sparkle to them because there's not really any need for it. Um, and if anything, it tends to turn fish off, I found. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. So now I'm just putting in some EPIs, just the small size crab and shrimp eyes. You can make your own on these if you want. That works fine too. The trick is to make sure that they're even because odds are every time I do one of these, I check it and it drives me crazy that they're not exactly the same height and distance apart. These ones actually look pretty good. So first time for everything. By the way, if y'all can't tell, commercial tires think on a very different level than the rest of us about flies and fishing and stuff. Uh, listening to these two talk in the office is pretty wild how in depth they get thinking about patterns and what they put on them and why. Um, even myself, a former commercial tire, can't keep up with these two anymore. We're super nerdy. 
Yeah, it's super nerdy, but no big deal. It's awesome. Yeah. It's like That's certain people have like IT jokes and Patrick and I have fly tying jokes that no one yeah. else does. That's <laughs> so stupid. What was the first Rio pattern that like you picked up, got picked up like commercially? Oh, uh, it's a good question. Maybe the Make It Rainbow was the first one I did, I think. Okay. Streamer. Yeah. Well back. Um, that was one of the first ones that I did. And then what else? Participation trophy. That's a solid reply, right? Yeah. Um, Patrick and I, um, our favorite thing, and I think that somehow we've gotten away with a lot of them, but our favorite thing is naming flies. So I like to think that we have some of the better names out there, but we get more enjoyment out of naming patterns than anything. Um, so it is pretty fun to have some pretty cool and unique names for our flies. Absolutely. Oh, the Just Keep Swimming. That's the other one that I did first. Yeah, so the right now, is one of our like favorite trout spay patterns for yeah. the last year. That the pocket rocket's probably one of my favorites for um, trout spay, which is awesome. It's not heavy and it sheds water real quick. So, so Britta, what are you adding now? Sorry, cut you off. Yeah, sorry. No, you're fine. I'm adding on. I don't use a ton of brushes, but in this case, I am. Um, this is an EP, uh, one of the shrimp legs brushes. Uh, and it's pretty awesome. It's one of the one inch, I believe it is, thickness. And I like it for trigger fish flies because they don't spook as easily. I mean, they do, unless you're fishing them on the correct tide. But they, uh, this tends to make it a little bit fluffier on the landing and softens the landing, but yet the lead still gets it down to where you need it to. Okay. And what I like is that it will make it, when it gets in the water, this sheds water pretty quick too but it keeps it looking pretty natural. The last thing I'm gonna do is take, I, I'm taking some of the Foxy brush and I cut it off and stacked it by hand. And this is the sand color one. So I'm just gonna take this and tie this in as a wing right on top and that's it. And then this fly is essentially done. Sweet. Was just keep keep swimming named after um, the Finding Nemo thing, or oh yeah, else? it was either that or he touched the butt, so it was one okay. of them. <laughs> I figured that might come up weirdly in some Google searches, so yeah. Best be safe for SEO. Reasons. I know. You never know. So is saltwater your favorite like fishery right now, or like do you go back and forth or? Saltwater is my favorite. It's always the one that I um enjoy and know the most uh but you'll never see me as excited as you will in tropical locations because that's no. it's super weird too because my skin hates it everything about me hates it my like i just <laughs> it's like telling me i should not be there <laughs> i i, know I you love it story. yeah um but it makes me so happy to be there and i get such a kick out of it I actually get just as much excitement watching people catch fish for the first time in the saltwater as I do myself. So that's, um, it's just a blast. That's why I'm really excited about doing this trip too. And so, favorite species to follow or your tummy earlier, are you like hunting them? Trigger fish are my favorite. So this is the little trigger fish guy right here. You um, have your iPhone camera too. Or try. I don't know Perfect. if it'll, we'll try and see how that goes. Yeah, it did well. Sweet. It's a just chubby little triggerfish fly that'll sink fast. Um, they are by far, hunting them is my favorite thing on the planet. Uh, the fact that the last time we went, I had Andrew Miller, our awesome photographer, trained to the second I hooked into one to run as fast as he could and jump on the hole so they couldn't hide out in the holes. Um, they're just such a cool little thing for being this short, little squatty, beautiful fish that, I mean, the last time, the coolest part is that the first time we went, the first day we were waiting to get picked up on the boat and I was literally just flicking out a bonefish fly while I was waiting for the boat to come pick us up off the flat. 
and cut a Picasso trigger, just not doing anything. Um, so you get a lot of really fun stuff. It's pretty cool to get random things. That's kind of why I love fishing the flats is you never really, like you know what you're gonna you're seeing, but you don't really know. Um, and you could find anything out there, so. Sweet. Are there any fly tires like out there right now that inspire you or that you follow and like get enjoyment out of watching tie flies? Yeah, uh, Johnny King is always yeah. gonna be one of the top. He's awesome. Um, Gunnar Brammer is obviously a really good one, which is why he's, we got him on there. Sure. Um, I really like a lot of Hogan Brown stuff. I love, um, there's a lot of international tires that I'm a big fan of. Um, Marcus Zetterblad, um, who else? Yeah. Yeah, there's just a lot, you know, and I am obsessed with everything striper fly not that i have any experience with striper fishing because i don't um but i just love being able to take everything that i normally tie for puget sound and see run cutthroat and make it exponentially larger so i mean it, it works obviously yeah for sure yeah and then obviously i love tying crab and shrimp patterns shrimp uh game changers and stuff are my favorite things ever to tie and fish mm. and watch and look at because i'm weird so yeah. I mean, we're all weird. Let's be real. Sorry, other flying lures, <laughs> I'm speaking for all of us. There's a little weird. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that's about it. Do you want to tie another booze cru cruise in a different color? Yeah, for those, let's keep those talking skit. and I can do that in a heartbeat. What originally like got you into fly fishing? I don't think I ever asked you this. Um, I, my dad and my grandfather, pretty right. much my dad in particular, um, my we had a place up on the Stella Guamish and we used to go up there all the time and almost every weekend for many years and my dad would mow the lawn and all that stuff and my sister who is a lawyer she didn't have as much um excitement around fly fishing um and I was like obsessed and so that was kind of where I started and then I really got into it midway through high school, even more so. So, right. do you remember yeah. the first fish you caught on the fly? Uh, I, it was a dolly on the stilly. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's um, a nice one to start on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I caught a lot of rocks too. I remember thinking many a rock was a fish when I was younger, but um, definitely a dolly was the first one. Then we used to go up to the lakes up on the Mountain Loop Highway and fish those. And there's a lot of fish up there to be had too. Um, but there's not nearly as many steelhead as there used to be in that in the stilly, so it's not as quite as lucrative. Let's do I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Cool. So what is that stuff you're using again? Just in case people like miss the first part. Yeah, this one is just actually sculpting flash fiber because it was in front okay. of me. But the uh Slinky fiber is another thing that'll work really, really well and sheds water really well. So this stuff is kind of fun to work with. And again, it's here, right? For me, so it works out good. So I'm gonna do that. If you really wanted to get creative at home, you could even add on a little bit of a peacock spine on this and that works too. That would look pretty. but not needed. Do you focus more on like imitation or suggestive tying or a mix or? I generally, I hate following recipes and I hate watching videos on tying. Um, Sorry everyone I, who's watching the video right now. <laughs> Where you go, Britta? <laughs> I only generally like to look at the real thing and model whatever I'm tying off of that. Okay. So, you won't generally see me because as people are tying, if say I want to be able to tie a shrimp pattern for bonefish and I look online and I find a shrimp pattern, then I'm going to kind of do my best to copy that pattern. And as you're copying other patterns, you're getting further and further from the real thing. 
because you don't know why you're doing necessarily, you don't know the weight that's inside of it. You don't know any of that stuff. So it makes it so that you're kind of veering further away from the real thing, as opposed to if you're actually just looking at the real thing, like say a little bait fish or a pinfish or something like that, then you know that you're exactly scaling it proportionately. The shaping is correct and the colors are correct. Whereas a lot of times things end up kind of morphed when you see just photos of them online. Sure. And I feel like that's like probably the evolution in your tying as to where, you know, when you start, you just want to get good at some of the techniques and stuff and how flies that work versus someone like you who's a product developer and is trying to come up with new flies to imitate certain stuff. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Well, and Not that also, you shouldn't do that also, but. Oh yeah, for sure. And I know, um, people will look at the way I style, I tie certain things and say, you know, it's not exactly the correct way to do it. Um, textbook wise, how to tie and how it's taught. If you take a tying class the proper way, the end result is still the same, but getting there might be different because I'm totally self-taught with all of this. So. Um, Sweet. Yeah. Now, what color should I bar this guy? He's olive on top and white underneath. I'll let people decide what they want me to do with it. I have every color known to mankind. Huh. Otherwise, it's going to be pink. Like That's what I was going to get. That's what was going to be my vote, honestly. Um, how did you start getting into fly time professionally and like get in with Rio and how did you get so to where you are today, Britta? <laughs> um, I just tying and posting online, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, um, when I was what, seven years ago, I was midway through divorcing um, my ex-husband, I won't say the name I normally use for his name. And um, I decided that I needed to find a way to make some money on my own. And besides just guiding. And so I started posting a fly a day on Instagram and started selling them commercially. And then from there, uh, one of the old sales managers here at Farbank noticed my flies. And they hired me as a technical rep or something, I think it was mm -hmm. um, in customer service, but it was just to, as an interim, knowing they were going to start flies. So sweet. Yeah. It's a weird and convoluted way I got here, but I got here. We're in the end. Well, we're glad to have you. Yeah. There we go. So what color should I do? Someone said orange. Okay. We've got hot orange and I've got orange. Let's just do regular orange. Ooh, hot orange wins. Hot so orange. This is the Copic markers are the only ones that are actually fluorescent. Watch this. You can blind yourself with it. I don't know if you can see. No, you can see how it bright this is. Yeah. It is so bright. It's obnoxious how bright this is. All right, so there's this. You guys, it looks really good, actually. I might come in there and steal that one, so thanks. <laughs> so this one works. looks really good. The other thing that you can do that's really fun about this fly, um, it's such an easy fly and simple fly to tie. It doesn't cost a lot for the materials. Um, but the other thing you could do, and I'll take one that I tied before, that also went in doubt, flish, or sorry, fish, flish fish like things that are bloody and look like they're dying. So you can always go in and take this and just do that to it. Mm. And when in doubt, that's going to work really well too. Um, so there's all sorts of things that you can do just with a few markers. And I found that for Copic markers, they're usually really expensive but you can find them on eBay really cheap a lot of times and they're used, but they last forever. So uh, it's a good way to go and get a bunch of them if you want to invest in some, an array of colors of them and then bring them on your next trip so you can kind of customize flies as you need to. Cool. 
Yeah. Well, thanks for spending some time today and showing us some cool stuff and talking about yeah. flies. Um, where can people find out about your trip if they're interested? Um, they can look on the Flywater website. You can always message me on Instagram as well. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. The group that we already have, the people that have signed up, are pretty awesome. So it's gonna be a really laid back trip. And for people that want to learn how to tie more, we're gonna be tying every night. So I'm gonna bring the vice, and anyone who wants to bring theirs, and we can tie up a bunch of flies that we could fish with the next day and get some fish on. So. Sounds terrible. Horrible life. <laughs> yeah, awful. I wouldn't want to go if anyone wants to, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. It's fine. I'm so excited. So Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Britta. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This will be on our YouTube uh, in posterity, so you can rewatch re it again whenever you want. And, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thank Have you. Have a good night.